This is Selma Schimmel at ASCO 2011, continuing our discussion now with a young researcher to begin to put the pieces together of the continuum of oncology, because it really begins in the laboratory. So I'm so happy to welcome you to sit with us, Dr. Stephanie Wong. Yes. And you come to us from the University of Chicago, where you have your own lab. Yes. That's right. Thank you very much. I'm very honored to be here. Well, I'm excited to help promote your work because our goal here is to bring you directly to the patients because you are the point where, where hope and, and inspiration begins. Tell us what you're doing in the area of ovarian cancer. All right, so the main field I'm working on is a pharmacogenomic field. Basically, we use DNA information from an individual, try to predict a person's sensitivity to a drug. Particularly, you know, in the field of anti-cancer drug, every, most of the drugs are fairly toxic. Therefore, you know, if we can predict before the patient even started the treatment, we can really better use the drug. So tell us about what you have learned as you it's a kind of sequencing it looked like when I, I saw your laboratory and I saw your slide and two letters in this genomic profiling mm -hmm. and G and A. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the work that you know only recently become possible. Now in the past we've been looking at the candidate gene basically as those are genes that we know play a role either in the drug metabolism or being the target of a drug. So we focus on study those genes and study variation and mutation within that gene. Hopefully that will explain why different individuals respond differently to a drug. But then more recently with the uh, completion of human genome project, uh, with the maturity of uh, technology, we are able to look at the human whole genome instead of looking at a few gene at a time, now we're at the time that we can look at the whole human genome at a time. So that really opens up a lot of new uh, possibility, especially in this case of when we talk about the A to G change. So this is by comparing about thousands of individuals, their whole genome DNA sequence. And then because we know certain individual responds to the drug better versus some other don't, and then comparing their DNA, we found those difference that so certain individual carry the A allele, A letter at the specific spot. Um, those individual response to traditional therapy fairly well versus those individuals at that particular location, if they don't carry the A letter, they have a G letter, those individuals tend to be much, response much worse compared to the other letter had. And so in that sense, the interesting finding is about that letter change is sitting in the gene that has never been associated with cancer before. The only time that gene has been studied is related to Alzheimer's disease. So that's really highlighted in, you know, the necessity of looking at more than what we know about the genes. If you have a gene which tells you that you are not going to be as responsive to traditional chemotherapy, what is the option for that patient? That's a very, very good question. The answer, the short answer is actually I don't know. That's needed a lot more research. At this point, all we know is that you know, for the eight, you're a lucky individual. You can undergo the traditional therapy. You will respond fairly fine. On the other hand, you know, the question comes down to if you have a G, for one, it could be simply don't respond to the agents. Two, it could simply because you have more toxicity, therefore your treatment was stopped or dose was lowered, therefore you don't get a better outcome. And the third choice, really, you know, maybe we should give you completely different. So in, if that's the case, we have to modify the dose for that traditional way. Uh, if the third choice, you simply just don't respond, then we really need to give those individual different agents. At this point, because we haven't tested the other agents, so I can't tell you um, but how that's uh, continued research need to be done. So in order to help um, excel your research, you need serum specimens. Tell us what you need so we can do a call to action. Absolutely. I'm so excited that, you know, meeting you and your support. You know, I, I'm sure a lot of patient advocates will really supporting this as well. That's the most promising 
you know, that I think it's for the field, really. People are standing behind us, supporting us. So what I need, basically, uh, one thing I think it's very interesting for my research is, you know, many people study cancer genetics. So you need the tumor tissues, and that's a much harder to come by. Versus my study, actually, I'm looking at the whole human genome. I don't study cancer tissue, because my theory is that you know, everybody are born differently. You know, you are predisposed to a certain thing. Your DNA code make you different. So that difference between your DNA code, you know, make your response differently to the drug. So for me, I don't even need uh, tumor tissue. All I need is blood, blood sample, or any sample I can get, even spit, I can get DNA from the person. Then I can study your DNA sequence, therefore link that to drug, to your treatment outcome. Okay, so all of these women with ovarian cancer that are listening to you now, they're going to go to their doctor, and what are they going to say to their doctor? Blood, it's fine, and then a serum or any subproduct of the blood is fine. Saliva is fine. That's I can get that from DNA out of it. Um, also, I would need their treatment outcome. Basically, we want to link the DNA to how they respond to a drug, right? So, so I would need. I can do all the work on the DNA, and I also would need to know how much drug they're taking. Are they ex developing adverse effect? You know, any side effect, or you know, did their disease come back? You know, the progression-free survival or overall survival about those patients. That's how we link the DNA to their outcome. Um, right now, we kind of complete the first stage that we tested in a thousand patients. Um, you know, we talk a little bit about this. The field of genet utilizing genetic information is still a new field. Therefore, it's a toughness. Like people always have this, you know, they want more. They want to replicate your study before they can implement it in the clinical practice. So we are sort of at finishing the discovery. We're moving into replication and hopefully pushing it into the real clinical practice end. So yeah, absolutely more sample would absolutely help because then I can replicate what my initial finding and try to persuade the clinician this is worthwhile trying. Dr. Wong, thank you for sharing what you're doing and, and helping us be advocates in, in action, that we can participate in emerging research that is so exciting coming from the Human Genome Project to hopefully helping us enhance the kinds of personalized therapies, personalized uh, medicine, targeted therapies, and molecular and genomic approaches in how we treat Absolutely. cancer. Absolutely. Thank you. Good really. luck to you. Thank you. You're welcome.